Ready to go? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, this poor kid. <laughs> okay. So thank you guys for coming. Um, today I am going to tell you a story. And while, while I'm telling the story, I want you to think about all of the characters and their decisions and their perspectives and how it affects everyone else in the story, um, how their decisions re affect reality for everyone else involved. So the Aztecs were an alliance of three city-states. And they were at the height of their civilization in 1519. Um, their culture credited their god of in innovation, Quetzalcoatl, with um, bringing agriculture and irrigation, um, astronomy and mathematics to the culture. And um, he was said to be returning in the year on the Aztec calendar of one reed. So Moctezuma II um, at this time in history was the ruler of um, the Mexica people. And he was a devotee of the war god Hummingbird. I cannot say, I've tried and tried, I cannot say his name in the native tongue, but it translates to hummingbird. Um, and Mo Moctezuma uh, communicated with him through psilocybin mushrooms. So <clears throat> um, through that communication, he believed that hummingbird wanted human sacrifice and conquest of neighboring tribes um, to prove that the Mexica people were worthy of his um, protection and the grandness that he is their war god promised them. Um, so human sacrifice was very commonplace uh, within Moctezuma's rule and um, at one point, he had, um, out on the steps of the Great Pyramid, he had uh, sacrificed over 80,000 people in under four days, I believe. So he was committed. He, he was very committed um, to this belief that human sacrifice would, would bring prosperity to not just his people, but himself. He wanted the glory of um, embodying the god hummingbird. So the sacrifices came from uh, neighboring tribes and people that they had conquered. Um, they would sacrifice the greatest warriors. They would sacrifice women and children. And generally this was done by them <coughs> filing up the steps of the Great Pyramid in, ten, uh, how do you say it? Um, ten, uh, ten Tenochtitlan. Um, and then when they reached the top of the pyramid, the uh, priests would lay them over a stone slab and while they were still alive, cut their, heart, their beating hearts out and then the bodies were um, dismantled for uh, use of feeding the rest of the people of the city. So imagine being a, um, a sacrifice to this guy, walking up these steps of the Great Pyramid and seeing the people before you being sacrificed, dismembered, and thrown down the stairs 
the other way. And meanwhile, a river of blood is running down the stairs of the pyramid that you're wading through to get to the top for your turn. So it's safe to say that because of this belief, Moctezuma was hated by almost everyone, probably not the people within the city that he lived, because um, it was a very prosperous city. They had canals. They had um, they had really uh, they had really well organized city structures in which everyone was fed well. Everyone had a job to do. Everyone was basically safe because they were under their ruler. Um, but anyone outside of that secure bubble was subjected to um, some of the worst atrocities that you could imagine. Um, and so Moctezuma was not well liked outside his bubble. Um, meanwhile, the year one read was a prophetic year for the Aztecs because two years before there had been, well, two years before there had been a comet seen in the sky over Moctezuma city and that was taken as a bad omen. Um, at the same time that all of this was happening, Hernan Cortez was assigned a conquest to sail to the Yucatan from Cuba uh, by the governor of Cuba, Diego Velasquez. Um, last minute, Velasquez tried to remove Cortez as his commander or as his captain general, um, but Cortez absconded with five ships and roughly 500 men. Um, horses, artillery, supplies. They cleaned out the slaughterhouses of the city before they left, um, and they sailed to the Yucatan without the, uh, without the grace of the governor. Um, through, uh, once, they, once Cortez reached the Yucatan, um, he began establishing relationships with uh, different, tri just different tribesmen. Um, <clears throat> and he ascertained that Moctezuma was the most powerful uh, leader out of the three city-states, that this was, that Moctezuma was the person that he was going to have to go after and or if he was going to conquer uh, this region. And um, he, through making the relationships with these different tribes, he uh, was given a slave woman, and her name was Malino. Um, Malino speaks both Mayan and the Mexica language, and um, she quickly picks up Spanish and becomes Cortez's translator. Um, she tells Cortez of the prophecy of Quetzalcoatl, um, that he was a light-skinned, golden-haired, blue-eyed god that would return to the Mexica people. Um, he would arrive on boats that moved without oars, um, with men that appeared to be half men, half beast. And they would carry um, snake sticks that could tear down any enemy from a great distance. So Cortez thought about that. He thought, well, I came, I, I'm light-skinned. I came in on uh, ships that sailed, not rowed, and um, we have guns, we have horses. We're going to play this prophecy to our advantage. Um, and he procured a compound for his men um, in the city of Tenochtitlan, um, as a guest of Moctezuma. But after a short period of time, the uh, Spaniards became paranoid and they took Moctezuma hostage. And when the people announced uh, the brother of Moctezuma would be the new king, Cortez ordered Moctezuma to address his people in a bid to gain back control. Moctezuma addressed the people of Tenochtitlan from a terrace at the Cortez compound, and he was berated as weak, and stones were thrown at him, and it's said that that's what killed him. However, there's um, 
paintings from that time that show him, that show Moctezuma with a sword through his belly. So whether or not Cortez took it upon himself to get rid of Moctezuma since he was no longer useful to him or whether it was the stones thrown by his own people that did him in, um, that was the end of Moctezuma. Um, so Cortez, in hearing that Velasquez had sent, uh, sent a mission of men to come and uh, remove the wares and men and goods that Cortez had stolen from Cuba. Um, Cortez had to leave the city and um, go handle the men that were coming after him. Um, while that was happening, uh, Cortez's right-hand man stayed in the city and um, when there, after Moctezuma's death, there was uh, some civilian outbreaks and also some attacks from the uh, Mexica military. And uh, uh, Cortez's right-hand man took it upon himself to have all of the nobles and priests in the city killed. Um, so when Cortez got back from handling the threat from Cuba, um, he came back to a very uh, unstable environment and they decided uh, collectively that the Spaniards needed to leave immediately and they loaded up boats full of gold as much as they possibly could and they took to the riverways, the canalways, uh, to escape the city. The Mexica people um, ratted them out immediately. A woman on the side of the river that they were floating down uh, sounded the alarm bell first and within just a few minutes there were warriors and civilians there to try to capture the Spaniards. Um, Cortez got out, his right hand man got out, El Dorado, I couldn't think of his name earlier, El Dorado um, made it out and uh, most of the other, sh the other boats carrying the men and treasure that they were hoping to take with them sank into the river. And since that time, um, from the Spanish perspective, they call that La Noche Triste, which is the sad night, but the Mexica people considered it the night of victory. Um, it was only a few months later that Cortez came back to, or I think it was shortly under a year later that Cortez came back to uh, Tenochtitlan and um, took the city. And then it was a short time thereafter that the entire Aztec empire fell. Um, it was partially due to battles, smallpox. Um, but at that, at that point, it seemed like it was inevitable that the civilization was going to fall to the Spaniards. Um, it's estimated that Moctezuma had about 200,000 warriors at his disposal and Cortez only had 500 men. And even after, even after the majority of those men, it's estimated about 300 men died um, during the sad night. Um, those few hundred men left over were able to bring down an entire empire. Moctezuma and the Mexica, as well as their native allies and their enemies through later battles, fell to Cortez and his men, but it wasn't because of superstition or prophecy. It was because Moctezuma reduced the value of life down until the people under his rule no longer believed in his vision and had no incentive to fight for him. He had done so, such harm that the people would rather he fall to a Spaniard than stand behind him. But had Moctezuma from the beginning of his reign in 1502 all the way up until the Spaniards' arrival in 1519, if he had built trust and loyalty in his people, the canvas of American, Central American history could look very, very different. Mm -hmm.